So let me let me just start today's uh, lecture with this video, which is uh, very uh, informative. I mean, like it's just nice. Okay, now here is our typical stop end that would be used to, uh, to orient the pre-stressing strands that we would use to apply that compressive force to the beam end. Now note, these strands are not tensioned, they are slack, so it, there's no danger here. You must be very, very careful with fully tensioned pre-stressing strands because there is a massive amount of force that can be contained in each of these strands. This particular strand, in fact, we would actually tension up to a load of 209 kilonewtons in just one strand. So what we would do, these strands would be jacked up. They would be pulled back and they would be essentially stretched. They would be put into that very large amount of tension, 209 kilonewtons for these. The concrete would be cast around the strands into the appropriate cross section. Once that concrete has reached the specified strength, the com specified compressive strength, then the strands would be gradually released, thereby transferring that force that was in the strands when they were stretched into the concrete. So that very large force in the strands would be then applied as compression into the beam itself. Now, notice with this strand layout, there's a far larger number of strands closer to the bottom of the beam. The bottom of the beam, the soft of the beam would be just 50 mil underneath the actual uh, bottom of the strands, 50 or 60 mil. The reason for that is not only do we want to apply compression to the beam, we also want to apply a bending moment to the beam as a result of the pre-stressing operation. So because that overall position of the strands is eccentric, it's removed from the centroid of the beam. That enables that application of the pre-stress to also apply a bending moment that will counteract, will act against and relieve the bending moment that results from the applied loads, the loads that will be applied to the beam under working conditions. Let's step back over to the finished beam itself and go through the final steps of the final aspects of how a pre-stressed bridge beam works. Okay, so this beam is one of our finished products. This was actually cast not long ago on this bed itself. Now, you'll notice there's a bit of a gap between the soffit of the beam and the actual bed itself. This is a result of what we just spoke about. When we apply that compressive force from the pre-stressing tendons, pre-stressing strands, not only do they apply that beneficial compressive force to the beam, but they also apply a moment that relieves the moment applied under working conditions. So this moment that's applied by the pre-stressing operation results in the beams actually cambering up. The beam will actually lift up several millimeters, 10 millimeters, whatever the case may be, depending upon the beam and the pre-stressing amount and layout used, it will actually camber up. Now, this is beneficial with regard to deflection checks as well, too. Generally, for bridge beam design, we don't need to carry out rigorous deflection checks, but from an aesthetic point of view, you don't want a beam visually sagging on site. So this natural camber that results from the pre-stressing operation itself will help eliminate the potential that that beam would be visibly sagging on site as well too. Finally, you'll notice as well too, we've got shear links in the beam as well. Um, the shear links we use in the bridge beam would really be not substantially different from what would be you may be accustomed to for reinforced concrete bridge beam design too. So again, so bridge beams, pre-stressed concrete bridge beams, 
would also make provision for shear design, shear reinforcement as well. Okay, so in order to summarize how pre-stressed, pre-cast bridge beams work, beams are intended to carry flexure as well as shear, but that flexure that they're going to carry results in tension. I'm uh, pausing it here. Okay. Now I just wanted to observe this shear link which is pre uh, provided. This is going to be a common feature for many of the precast elements, whether it's pre-stressed or not. Okay. We'll be going for the filigree slab concrete. In this, what happens is you're going to have cast in situ concrete or topping done on a precast unit. So for all such, you need this. And if you look at this uh, shed itself, the shed itself is uh, having a lot of pre-stressed, uh, precast elements. Of course, it's kind of expected from a precast, uh, precaster's uh, facility to have precast elements because he has to show he believes in his work. Now look here, the columns precast, they've got a steel uh, knee provided for the gantry girder which is there, the gantry crane which is there runs on the beams over there. So uh, this is again a very common feature in all the uh, precasting elements. They will have to have a lifting arrangement. If you remember, they would have seen some forklifts going around. Because all these uh, things are rather heavy, although they are light, uh, per se they are still heavy elements. Okay. So you can see that the roof, of course, uh, the roof is uh, again concrete. Can you see the edges are thickened okay, for the shear consideration? And you can also have, uh, but, uh, but the roof looks like it's only sheeting. The sides are sheeted, uh, sides are side sheeting and uh, lastly, just look at the way the plant itself is kept. Now, if you see, this part is sheeting but at the bottom actually there is concrete. I am just trying to come to a place which will show it a little clearly. Still not too clear, but in any case, you'll find that to a certain height, you'd have concrete planks. Concrete planks are just uh, slid into grooves which are available in the column, thereby making it a wall, protecting the place from entry of water. Okay, and also you know, like uh, people just can't walk into the uh, manufacturing area. Okay, so I hope this was uh, informative to you. Now. These are the elements which we typically precast: walls and slabs. Okay, the filigree uh, is the semi-precast. Okay, that is you'll have a uh, cast in situ topping at least which is put up. What is this topping? You'll have individual precast elements come in. Then you put a concrete slab on top, maybe with some reinforcement. This gives continuity for all the elements, making them behave like a single element. So it forms a membrane. So this is the filigree slab, okay? And then you've got uh, facades, you may have the whole facades be itself put up, beams, columns and stuff like that, okay? So these are the parts of the building, if you look at it. I'm not going to go too much into this. You can uh, look at it in the presentation and I share it with you. So when you look at walls per se, these are the walls. Curtain walls are just a decorative walls. Then you may have load bearing walls what we talked about and we also have a little bit of a uh, little more uh, clarity of what these walls are in some of the photographs which I have. Then you got shear walls which would be essentially taking the lateral loads. Then you got solid slabs like what we've got above but most commonly used are the hollow core slabs because it, they, it has a direct reduction in weight with an increase in stiffness because the depth is more stiffness automatically increases. Okay. And again, the filigree slab which we talked about. Now, these are some of the standard forms of uh, the standard forms of the uh, precast uh, units: the rectangular beam, L beam, double uh, inverted T. So, inverted T you can have actually, you know, you can keep the precast units on this. And this is a bridge beam. Okay? They usually call it the Ashto bridge beam uh, because of the form which which has been standardized in Ashto. Look at the columns. You got uh, corbels kept for placing subsequent beams. Okay, uh, in both the directions or in all the four directions also you can have 
and then you got staircases and uh, hollow cores which we talked about okay now there is something called uh, modular elements what is a modular element they fix they are in certain fixed sizes or modules okay as an example you would have seen the modular switches they got a switchboard where you can just press fit uh, elements so a plug would be two times the width of a switch so there is a unit uh, of measure and all the elements go in multiples of that basic unit okay so this is modularization okay now this is a statement which are taken from the indian code for precast elements and if you see they got something like a 2m 1m so they want everything to be in multiples of 1 meter or 2 meters which would be essentially the unit of one module so uh, different countries have different modular standards the advantage is just like this lego block which i have put up here you will be able to just assemble mix and match any any item which would be put in a prefabricated unit but what has uh, one observation is that it makes everything look like shoe boxes everything looks just the same whichever house you look it looks just a boring pattern so uh, instead of that people now want to have standards that means you can have a group of standards so we can mix and match between two standard items in fact uh, one of the biggest things where you know like uh, i suggest a little off note it's standardization of bridge elements i think i spoke about the abc which was followed a little while ago in uh, america abc is accelerated bridge construction so for that they standardized a whole uh, set of sections and universities were part in that okay so in fact for a j component you can even think of standardizing some of the sections Okay, so that uh, you have a ready reckon a, a table just by looking at it you know what section could be used for a particular span of bridge for a class of loading okay so that is a that's also something which you can probably think about okay standardization is more desirable personally now this is again you know like what is uh, the introduction what we were talking about so these are the four kinds of uh, systems which you have skeletal system and if you look at the skeletal system you have a you have individual elements which are brought together and put in to make a structure okay then you can have the walls so between these walls everything runs okay the walls are load bearing you bring the wall panels and keep it in place and then you will have the rest of the structure brought into uh, position so you can usually they make it for hotels and hostels and stuff like that where you know you can have clear cut defined walls okay so these are some of the things uh, so this is something about the wall now if you have a look at it you see you have to prop the walls properly at least three sides you need to have it and then the fourth side will be the one which locks it so they have some custom uh, connection systems for example halpen is a connection system halpen is a connection system for pre cast units particularly or even in cast in situ you can use they got uh, inserts and so many other things which are done at the time of casting okay there is another thing called hilti i don't know if you have heard of that hilti are anchor fasteners which you use after concrete is set halfen is a company which specializes in uh, when uh, before the system sets so they got a type of loop which you can just embed into the wall so once you place it you bring out the loop tie up the entire thing and then you are through okay uh, i think i got a few photographs which i took of the uh, of the loops uh, which i'll show you uh, which i'll show you I, i just hope i remember it excuse me please yeah so this is a typical portal frame system next i told about the cellular system yeah we are talking about the cellular system this is a cellular system look at it an entire box is being brought in now look at this this might be the hotel room the entire hotel room is brought in this will have if it's a if there is a bathroom in it the bathroom would be fit already bathtub everything is ready they will have the plumbing done all you have to do is you have to just plug it into the main sewer system the electrical work is already done in the casting yard you just have to plug it into the main because the switch everything is local it's only within the room that the switch is going to be so you just plug it into the mains it's done so very interesting right so just look at the speed which you can achieve when such a thing is 
done okay now this is a double t system there are two t's with a uh, uh, slab on top you can just keep these two t's and then your floor is ready maybe this is the mall floor okay so you can see how fast you can construct okay now this is a multi story building which was uh, which i which i'm just taking and showing where precasting can be used and uh, the timelines are very tight like you know we can finish a 10 story building in 3 months to say 6 or 7 months depending on how amenable the site is if there is lifting difficulty to lift if there is difficulty in bringing elements if there is difficulty in storing elements inside then you may have a longer lead but otherwise typically it is just a matter of keeping on stacking elements ok so you can see the shape of the precast building which is here this is the site from which I took it you can go and have a look at this look at the uh, shapes which are precast before uh, like you know which are uh, which are amenable for precasting it's very different shapes are easily precast okay so these are some of the uh, items which are normally requiring that you design them for so flows type of flows composite then of course there's a longitudinal joint between the flows which you have to look at and i'm not going to read out all of them if you have any doubt in any of these you can please ask so floor connection at load bearing or cladding panels what is cladding panel it's just a decorative panel which you keep in the front or the side of the building okay so what sort of connection has to be done and again what is composite beam so maybe you got a steel and a concrete element more than when more than one type of material is being used you got to call it a composite system okay so yes i am going to just tell you what this insert is okay typically whenever you are going to design an element you will need to facilitate future connections these are called inserts if you go to an engineering uh, to an industrial plant inserts are literally like lifelines so what happens is they are plates usually typically plates which are kept embedded in the concrete they are called inserts they are called embeds so many terms are there so with the shear key so when you are concreting before concreting these inserts are kept in place for example cable trays will run so to support the cable tray you need to have inserts provided in uh, concrete some equipment may be suspended from the top or it may require some support at the bottom so that time you provide insert plates okay. in, uh, in a precast unit something you, can, you cannot weld a concrete element with another concrete element so instead of that what they do they will provide steel inserts on the wall and maybe at the end of the beam so you can weld the steel elements so these plates which are kept up called the steel inserts so essentially here what happens is you have to design these elements for shear so that is the principal mode of load transfer which you have it should come out it should pull out also so that is the second thing which you uh, look at so typically you pull out is uh, in the shape of a cone so the cone surface should match uh, the tensile strength of the cone uh, the surface of the cone should be greater than your pull okay, so it will be usually multiplied by your factor of safety so again walls and columns subject to gravity load what is a splice splice is a connection of two elements reinforcement rods can be spliced you remember what are the ways you can splice usually you go for a development length tie up the bars that's one way you can have mechanical splice, splice or couplers where you join, keep both of them uh, in, in contact then you put a mechanical device crimp it so so many ways you can uh, splice reinforcement in the same way you will have to splice these precast elements columns may not come the 15 story height may come say 2 or 3 story height so you need to put the joints these are called splices excuse me again columns in pockets column bases are nothing but the foundation for columns now if you are having a pocket or a socketed base it means it is going to provide fixity you will have a hole inside which you put the element then you grout it okay typically you can see this in the uh, uh, cantilevers that is uh, this uh, electric poles for the uh, trains they are supported on what we call as cantilevers or uh, so that column is only inserted into a hole concrete is filled in but it is having fixity 
Okay, so this is what we call as a pocket. Column on a base plate, typical column like what you see in Pudisa somewhere, where you got a base plate on which the column is resting. Okay, and this is something you also designed in your steel structures, right? In your VTEC course. Yes or no? Maybe you have forgotten. Okay, <laughs> but in any case, it will be worth your while to go and uh, have a look at it. And then grouted sleeves. So what happens is sleeves will be provided into which probably reinforcement rods will match. Then you will be pouring, uh, grouting it, and this will be um, uh, this will this will have a continuity between the elements. Okay. So what I I am going to stop now because uh, we really don't have much time. So I'm just going straight to my uh, references. These are some of the references which I have, and I'm just going straight to my thank you slide. Okay. So I hope you uh, found this informative, this uh, lecture informative. We will go more into the uh, design part in the next class. We'll go for some of the uh, uh, ideas or concepts which we have to go in for the design of. Precast elements. Just remember, precast elements don't differ much from ordinary elements. Only difference is that you know these elements require very good connection, which is separately designed. Otherwise, design principles are the same as other uh, uh, any other element. Okay.